welcome to the testing world this is the first video of this course AWS for testers so in this video I will explain you course roadmap so first of all very important question before starting the course who can take this course so all the freshers who want to move into software testing or software development you can take this course in this short course you will understand basic to intermediate level knowledge of AWS we have built this course by taking that you are very new to the to the AWS and cloud services it will teach you basic steps like introduction and setup and will take you to the advanced level with use cases so this course is ideal for software testing professional so be it manual tester or automation tester so if you are working as a manual tester or automation tester this course will help you to understand AWS and cloud services also you will understand where you can implement your knowledge after learning this course so here I'm going to show you some use cases which are specific to software testing only now this is our course roadmap so as a step one first of all we are going to take introduction of AWS in that I will give you some testing related scenarios then you will cover how we can set up AWS account for practice so it will be a free account which you can use for practicing this course then in the step 2 we are going to start with the service EC2 this service is used for creating virtual machines so here I will show you how you can create virtual machine non windows virtual machine as well as windows virtual machine and then we will check how we can connect with these machines for usage in the step 3 I will show you how we can create images because once you create a virtual machine and I want to replicate I want to reuse that vir virtual machine on 10 different places so we can save that virtual machine as an image and we can clone that virtual machine so that is a very important concept I'll cover up as a step 3 in step 4 you will see what is s3 services so that would be introduction in the step 5 we will learn s3 bucket and its implementation in the step 6 I will show you some other services for usage like you have heard about two-factor authentication that is very common in today's environment so that kind of services we will check here in the step 6 so that would be our AWS course roadmap what you will achieve after this course so let's start from the from the bottom first of all you will be aware about cloud services where why and how we use cloud services you will get practical knowledge of all the services that we are going to cover here so you can implement that knowledge in your project resume strength when you add AWS in your resume it will make your resume more powerful because many companies are looking for professionals who have good knowledge of AWS or cloud services I will show you how you can implement this AWS in testing practice so if you are working as a manual tester or automation tester it's going to help you a lot for implementation of cloud services in your project you will be interview ready after taking this course this means when you are going for soft software manual testing or automation jobs you can easily answer cloud service services related questions and that's a starting point for switching the career into the AWS if you want to take your career towards the AWS or cloud services that would be your starting point that is all about this course let's meet in the next lecture welcome to the testing world in this session I will explain you why as a software tester or QA we should learn AWS AWS is a very hot topic in the market and you have seen a lot of people a lot of professionals are learning it but now the question is how AWS is going to help me in my job and responsibilities and how it's going to help me to take my career forward in software testing so this lecture is completely related to where and how we can utilize AWS in our testing or I would say QA profile. 
So I'll show you few use cases of AWS implementation which are related to software testing only because developers are also using AWS but they have separate set of use cases. I will focus only on the use cases which are related to software testing. So first and very important use case is setup environment for testing. So let's take an example. You got an application and we need to test this application on different operating system and different browser. How you will set up that environment on your machine? Because you have one machine uh, with one operating system with two or three browsers. But I want to test my application on 10 different operating system with eight or 10 different browsers. How you are going to test that? Either you can raise a request to your company to provide you all these configuration for all these operating system and browsers. But that's not going to be easy for them as well because they cannot arrange that many of machines with a different configuration with a different operating system and browsers. So easy way would be we will create virtual machine with required operating system and browsers that can be easily achieved by using a AWS, imagine web services. So in AWS, we have a service with the name EC2 with the help of which we can create any number of machines with different operating system and different set of softwares. And we are not required any hardware. We just need to have account on the AWS. We can simply create machines over there. You will have to pay only for the time you are using these machines. So let's take an example. You need five operating system with five different browsers. If you raise a request to your company and company won't purchase a physical machines, so they will have to purchase five different laptops with and install the different set of softwares over there, but it will be very expensive way. Easy way would be, we just need to use EC2 service of AWS. There we can create any number of machines and we will have to pay only for the time we are using that. So let's take an example, you want to use them for two hours only. So you will have to pay only for two hours after that either you can uh, shut down that machine or you can uninstall it. So ultimately by using the AWS, we can set up any environment with different set of softwares and different operating system. So as a QA, in many cases, we are required to set up different environment for the testing. And here AWS is going to help us a lot. AWS is going to be a very good solution because it will be a very, very fast, easy, secure, and I would say less costly solution as compared to physical machines. So that is the first and very important use case or of AWS in software testing. Next is client environment for testing. Okay. In many cases you have seen when you're joining any project or company, you are getting a laptop from the company side, but you are not working on that laptop. You are going to get a client's environment. You will have to navigate to the client environment and you have to test over there. So you can simply understand client is going to provide you a machine to work, but client is going to send you a physical machine. Answer is no. Then how they are going to give. So they will simply create a virtual machine or on the AWS or any other cloud and share with you. Advantage would be they can simply give limited set of permissions to you and it will be more secure because and on that virtual machine they can allow you client can allow you a limited set of permission like you are not allowed to download anything or you are not uh, allowed to install anything. So these set of permissions can be set easily on the AWS machines. When you join that project client will create a machine on the AWS or I would say virtual machine on the AWS with a limited set of permission and share with you and it will be more secure because you are going to get only limited permissions. You cannot install anything. It will be a secure client environment. Next and very important is replication of real environment. Okay, let's take an example. Now you are the first tester on this application. Client has given you one virtual machine with limited set of permissions and some set of softwares. Later on, five more prof professionals join your team and client wants same set of settings, same set of environment for them as well. So what they will do, they will just replicate or make a copy of your virtual machine and it will be up and running in few minutes only. So that would be the great advantage for the client 
like one environment they will set up and after that they will just replicate that environment and that is very easy to do in case of cloud or I would say AWS. So that is also a very important use case for a software tester because we are getting these kind of virtual machines while working as a QA. Few more use cases which are related to the automation. So you have seen in many cases if, if you have used Selenium ever you know that we, we can do the parallel execution of the Selenium test cases in many parallel machines. But how to get these parallel machines? So you will not have to worry about that because if you have the AWS account you can create parallel machines you can call them nodes and you can simply execute your test case in parallel on these nodes or the virtual machines and again as I told you previously if we are using these machines for one hour so we have to pay only for one hour so that is the biggest advantage and that will be used for web and API testing also these nodes or the parallel execution can be used in a functional as well as in the performance testing set up one or multiple nodes for Jenkins so these are the areas where we are doing parallel execution and here we can use AWS in many cases company has an AWS account they will give you the access on that you can create your machines as per your requirement and later on you can just drop these machines drop these virtual machines or you can just sh shut down for later use so it's up to you so in many cases you will get access of AWS to create machines as per your requirement but before that you must have understanding how to work on the AWS high configuration environment even that I have faced in real time as well like sometimes you will get production issues when you're trying to replicate you are not able to replicate that why because client has different set of environment and it's a high configuration environment might be it has 64 GB RAM 128 GB RAM and you will not find that kind of environment in your organization then how to replicate that bug in client like environment for that we can simply create a virtual machine by using any set of configuration and you can use that for one hour two hour and later on you can dump it so again AWS is going to help us to set up the environment for replication of issues for testing the client scenarios to replicate client like environment so that is a high configuration environment normally we don't find these environment in our organization we can simply replicate using AWS performance testing is one of the core area where we can use AWS because in performance testing we want to apply load from the different time zone from the different countries from different IPs and practically it's not possible to have uh, machines on the different time zones and different countries so that can be easily achieved by using these cloud services especially AWS now what all the advantages we are going to get with AWS AWS or any cloud service so we can say easily deployment without downtime in today's environment many applications are the API based application and they are in the form of microservices microservices you can take it as a each component is behave as a service or a single application so let's take an example in my application I have 10 different components so ultimately there will be 10 different services which need to be deployed for running the complete application now what kind of deployment we are following these days these all microservices are deployed on a different machines or you can call it different servers advantage would be after making any changes if you want to, to put latest build so you need not to down the application or down the complete application you can simply down one node or one server and deploy there so let's take an example I have 10 functionalities 9 are still working fine only one functionality or one service is down for a few hours and it is working again but in some cases we don't want any downtime so in that case what we can do we can keep few other servers with us latest build of any functionality can be deployed on any new server once the new server is up we can just use that and down the previous server so that kind of architecture that kind of deployment without downtime is possible with AWS we are saving a lot of resources here human resource hardware resource software resource you know that okay let's take an example I need five Windows machine so I have to purchase five laptops five operating system and we have to install different softwares on that 
and I want that for 10 days only. So again, after 10 days, there is no use of these five laptops. But in case of the AWS, we can simply create five virtual machines, use them, and after 10 days, we can simply kill that. So it is going to save a lot of human resource, hardware, software resources, and ultimately it is going to reduce environment setup time and cost as well. These machines are more secure because security is taken care by Amazon. All the security configuration, all the security has been taken care by the Amazon. You need not to worry about that. So we, again, we don't need any more resources or any more software for making secure environment. So that is again advantage with AWS or with any cloud services. We can replicate environment very quickly. As I given you example, like I have one environment which is set up for the QA. Now five more QA join the, join the company. So now we need not to install all these softwares again and again. We can simple rep, simply replicate that environment. So ultimately it's going to save a lot of time to create new replicate environment for different team members. We can apply secure access. Uh, I hope you heard about uh, two-factor authentication. So we have different ways of authentication. So here in AWS, you'll get different options, different type of authentication. You can apply simple username and password. It can be token-based authentication. It could be two-factor authentication. Um, you are getting SMS on the mobile or you are, getting, you are getting a code on your email. So different kind of authentication can be applied by using this AWS. Here we have seen some important use cases of AWS which are related to software testing. So I would say in today's environment, many companies are expecting you must have knowledge or practice and practical experience on AWS. So I would say that is going to be must to have a skill for any tester in coming days. That's all we have for this session. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome back. So previously we have seen why as a tester we should go for AWS. So I have shown you different use cases where we can use AWS from testing point of view. Now I will show you how you can set up free account on AWS for practice. But that's a very simple process. Here we can set up an account. We can register on the AWS with a valid debit or credit card. Now the point is are they going to charge anything answer is no they will ask you to enter correct details of debit or credit card they will charge around two rupees in indian currency and you can take it as a one or two cents in usd so they are going to charge it to verify your account later on they will reverse that money account will be active within 24 hours means once you create an account it will take some time to be active once it will active only after that you can use it this account will be free for 750 hours or one year so means you can create an account once it is active you can use it for practice and it will be free up to one year or 750 hours so that is too many hours for learning point of view and in that hours they will not charge anything from you one more thing I want to update here in AWS all the services are not free so here in the free account we can use only the services which are which are freely available for trial so I'll show you all these things later on but as of now we'll create a free account on AWS first of all I'll just move to the Google and I'm typing create AWS account you will get this uh, link like create and activate AWS account yes complete sign up I want to go for the sign up of this here it will ask for root user or IAM user but that will be used when we are signing in as of now I want to create a new account so create a new AWS account here you need to fill your information like I'm just giving testing word noida whatever the password you want to give account name so I'm saying okay my account name is testing word noida and it's a five step process so that's my step one continue okay it shows this account is already there with this email okay what I do I'll just use some other email okay now 
Step one is done. Now in the step two, it will ask you what kind of account you want to create. You want to create for your business or personal account. Go for the personal account. So here, that's a personal account. You can fill your information. So like I'm giving testing word, whatever the number you are having and address one city one state one you can put your complete information i'm just giving a sample data over here okay once you put all this information means that's your personal and address information that's a step two once you move from step two here in the step three you need to give your credit or debit card information once you give complete information over here and go to the next step again it will ask for some more basic information and create your account as i told you it's a five step process so in the next step it will send an activation link on your email so you will get these basic information to create an account once your account is created and it shows here it will take two rupees in indian currency inr2 and once it will verify it will reverse that amount it is not going to charge anything till 750 hours or one year okay once you create an account you will have to wait for around 24 hours once your account is activated let me show you because i have another account once your account is activated you will go to the sign in page and you will log in so i'm just going to, as a root user okay my email id is testing word india at the red gmail.com so testing word global at the red gmail.com that's my account email id okay and i'm just trying to log in with my account which i've already created previously okay once you're logged in once you're logged in you will go to your dashboard right that's my account here so i can use the different services over here like one of the service name is ec2 i can simply select and start using that so in the coming videos i'll show you how you can use these services like you can create instances so what do you mean by instance how to create instance how to use them i'll show you later on but as of now i have shown you how to create account and once it is activated you can start using them so here we have seen it's a very straightforward process we just need to register on the aws by using your valid debit or credit card account will be active within 24 hours and it is free for use free to use for 750 hours or one year so you can set up your account for practicing coming videos that's all we have for this session thanks for watching this video welcome back so previously we have seen how to set up AWS account. Now I'm going to show you how we can use services on AWS. And we are going to start with a very common service name is EC2. And it stands for Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. But you can simply understand this is the service by which we can create virtual machines. So as we know, this is the very very common service to be used because in many cases you will find virtual machines. Sometimes you will get virtual machines from the client side. Sometimes you will get virtual machines from your company for different type of testing. So that is a very common service we will work on. So I'm just going to my AWS account and I'll show you how we can use this EC2 service. And in this session, I'll create a new virtual machine of Unix or Linux. We are going to create a new instance, but as of now, we will not change many configuration. We'll take only default configuration. We have to set tags, generate key, and start that VM. So I'll show you all these things step by steps. Let me just move to AWS account. Okay, here I am on aws.amazon.com. I'm going to log in. So sign into the console and as previously we have seen i'm logging as a root user my email id is testing word global at the red gmail.com 
putting this captcha value and my password once I logged in that is a dashboard here on the left hand side you will get services drop down you can check all these services which are given which are provided by Amazon it's more than 165 services we can use here on Amazon but as of now we are going to use very popular and common service with the name EC2 so either you can select it from here or you can simply go and search like EC2 I want to use EC2 so here it shows okay that's it you want to create virtual servers in the cloud yes so I just selected EC2 okay here we are on the instances if you want you can go here on the EC2 dashboard and you, it will give you basic information about what all the instances you have created what is the current status of that but as of now I do not have any any instance it is not showing any instance which is running and all instance you can understand one virtual machine so one instance means one virtual machine as of now I don't have any virtual machine so I want to create a new ins instance means I want to create a new virtual machine you simply go to this instances as you go here you will have to click on launch instances so as we click on the launch instances it will show you sample virtual machine images you are going to get many virtual machine images over here some images are free to use because like we can use this one or at the bottom you will find many other images which we can use in free account because as of now we have a free account so we can use only free images so let's check this checkbox it will show only the images which we can use in free account so as of now you can check we have total 17 virtual ima images which we can use while creating virtual machine I want to create a Linux machine or maybe I want to create Red Hat Linux machine so you will get a lot of options over here and we have many options for Windows as well but later on I'll show you how we can create Windows virtual machine as of now I'm just creating a simple Linux 2 virtual machine so that's my virtual machine you just select it so I'll just click on the select okay as you select it shows these are the configuration you are having like you can have one CPU one GB RAM or you can have many other configuration but for the free account we have only one configuration to be used so I can use this one CPU with one GB RAM but if you have a paid account you can create a virtual machine with many CPUs and I configuration RAM as well but for now because we are learning so I'll just use only the free one so I'm using this T2 micro which is a type of that machine here you are going to get one CPU and one GB memory okay I'll click on the next even we are not going to make any changes in the configuration but let's check few configurations so I'll just click on this as of now it shows you are going to create instance one yes for now we are not changing any details over here even later on we will check this subnet we will check this subnet public IP but for now I'm just keeping it same I just click on the next it shows as of now you have 8 GB storage you can change it as per your requirement as in our Windows machine we have a hard disk let's say 160 GB or maybe 500 GB or 1, 1 TB so in the same way it shows that is 8 GB you are going to get as a hard disk means as a as a storage you are going to get as of now I'm not going to change it I'll just keep it same click on next here we need to set tags it will be very important when we are going to have many virtual machines I would say many instances you can give tags like okay let's take an example you have total 30 machines 15 for developers and 15 for testers and today I want to check only the machines which are allocated to my testing team so how to search them you can create tags for that so I'm just creating a tag like okay tag key is machine type and the value is for testing you can give any value so that is a tag which we will use for for searching these machines for searching our instances as of now we just give one tag you can create any number of tags next 
Next is security group, which is very important. Sometimes you have noticed few machines you can access only through your office network. Or there are some machines you can access from anywhere. So here you can set the security from where this machine can be accessed. So here it shows this is the virtual machine. It's on a Linux environment. When somebody want to connect it, it will be connected through SSH using the TCP protocol. Your port would be this and from what all locations you want to access it. You can select from anywhere. You can select uh, from custom means you can give any specific IP over here or you can select okay it should be accessed from my IP only my IP means the system which I'm using right now so once I set my IP later on I can access this machine from my system only or if I set uh, custom so you can give IP from where this machine should be accessed as of now I'm just giving anywhere even it, they are giving warning like it is not a good approach not a secured approach because anybody can access your machine from any location if they get the key later on we will understand the concept of key but it can be accessed from anywhere it is less secure okay. as of now I'll just keep it like okay it can be accessed from anywhere review and launch as I click on the review and launch shows all those details like what we filled what all the changes we have done so it shows all details over here I found okay that's fine I want to create this machine just simply click on the launch as you click on the launch it will ask you to create a key by this key you can access your virtual machine so that is you can take it as a password because some, whenever we are accessing any virtual machine we need username and password I'll show you how to get username but this key can be considered as a password so I'm saying okay uh, create a new key pair and what is the name you want to give so I'm saying VM access key as you download it will download a file with the extension dot PEM so we need to download that file okay that is you can check it VM access key dot PEM file is downloaded once it is done launch instances as you launch instances your instance is started you can simply go to your service like EC2 here you will get okay this is the instance you have created status of this VM is pending it will take few minutes to ready this VM for usage so it will take few minutes we just need to refresh and check it once it will show that is ready to be used only after that we can use it okay so it shows the instance is running actually we need to check two columns one is instance state that is running here check status so here it should, should display two by two means there are two status to be checked once it shows two by two only after that used it is ready to be used so still we need to wait I'm just waiting for this now I refresh and you will check 2 by 2 status passed means now this VM is ready to be used okay let's click on this as you click on this it will show details of this VM so if you just go down here it shows that is your instance ID that's a public ID so this is the IP address public IP this is the IP address we are going to use while connecting this VM and that's a private IP which will be used while connecting two different VMs but as of now we need to focus on this one this one only or you can use this public DNS so these are the things we are we are going to use and just scroll down so it shows you have this platform and that's your virtual machine ID Amazon virtual instance ID and that's your machine name so it shows complete information about the instance or the machine that you have created it shows the complete information over here so as of now this mach the machine is running and ready to be used in next session I'll show you how we can connect with this machine but before ending this session one very important thing I want to tell you this machine is running so your 750 hours are consuming over here 
so whenever you are using the machine when you are using the machine virtual machine you can keep it running but if you are not using it you can simply select and just stop the instance so as you stop instance means now you are stopping this instance means you are not using it anymore so it's always a good practice whenever you are using any instance make it up once you com complete your task just make it down else if you keep it running it will consume your 750 hours very quickly so that's a very important thing we have to understand okay i have just stopped it and if you just refresh it shows instances stop so here we have created one instance means one virtual machine in next session i'll show you how we can connect with that virtual machine that's all we have for this session thanks for watching this video welcome back so previously we have seen how we can create a new instance means we have created a new virtual machine while creating virtual machine we have seen how we can set tags and what is the use of tags also we have generated a key which is a dot ppe file which we are going to use while connecting with the vm and also i have shown you how we can stop the vm because when we created the vm it was automatically started and later on we just stopped it now i'll show you how we can start this vm and how we can connect with the vm okay for that first of all i'll just select that vm which i want to use go to instance state start instance so you can start your instance as i start instance process will be started we just need to check here instance state as well as status check so we are just waiting for this running and status would be two by two let's refresh it will take some time to start it so we just need to wait over here okay running and here status check should be two by two so let it be two by two we can connect this vm through terminal means through the command prompt for that we are going to install a software with the name win scp so i'm just going to the google download win scp okay i'll just go to its website we have the option to download so i'll just click on the download and yeah download direct so it will download the software once you download just run it even i already have the software on my machine so we just need to install it i'll show you the installation process so next next and finish we need not to make any changes just next next and finish so i'll just next install it will install win scp so that will be our client software or i would say client on our machine through which we can connect this virtual machine and as i told you it's a linux machine we can work on that through terminal so that is done i'm going to la launch this win scp now let's check the status of this virtual machine that is still initializing so it will take some time let it be complete only after that we will use it yeah so now it shows now it shows two by two check pass means now my vm is up and running i want to connect with this vm so we have two different approaches one just select this vm or you can call it instance click on connect as you click on connect it will show you ec2 instance connect would you like to connect here it will be a web connection means you will get a tab over here through which you can use this vm okay i'll just keep this option for now click on connect so it open a new tab to work on that vm so to connect through the web or i would say through the browser we don't need that win scp that will be used in the second approach but as of now in the first option we are connecting through the web here whatever the command we want to run so I, i'm running like ls ls hyphen la pwd so i'm i have connected with that virtual machine i'm using it that is one approach to connect with the vm other approach would be we are going to use win scp so as of now i just close this okay now to connect with the win scp i'll just go here on the ssh ssh client but remember this is the username 
if you check it ec2 hyphen user so i'll just go to the ssh client it shows that is your machine name so you need to connect on this okay let's go to the win scp here i want to create a new session so i'll just go to the new session and new site that is my previous connection which i have done so if you want i can delete it it will not make any confusion now you will not be confused okay new site here we need to select like f you can select scp now whatever the host name you are having so that is my host name if you remember your port was 22 now what is my username so it's ec hyphen user you can check it here now what is the password how to set password we don't have any password but hope you remember we have a ppe key so simply go to the advanced and here we'll go to the ssh authentication here we need to select that file so i'll just go and it is in my download all files so you will get that file like vm access key dot pem so actually this is the pem file win scp need ppk means a different file but it will use this file and create a ppk file so that's the advantage with the win scp it will use this file and create its new formatted file which is ppk so i'll just select that okay and it is going to create a new file with the extension ppk would you like to save it yes i'll save it so it will use that newly created file ppk file it use ppe file and created its own private key file so we'll just follow these steps okay once it is done click on ok now you need not to give any password because you already have that private key file it will read it from there click on login as you log in yes it is connecting with that it shows your user is not correct let's check it uh, ec2 user let's check it over here it's a ec2 hyphen user okay it was ec2 hyphen user i was giving ec2 user let's try to connect again this time it is connected and it is connected with that machine now i want to perform all the tasks on that machine through the command prompt like i want to use a terminal and want to perform different tasks on that so simply go here on commands and open in putty as you click on the open in putty it will open a putty and you already logged in there simply you can run your commands so i'm just writing like ls hyphen la or maybe mkdir i'm creating a folder here so what all the tasks you want to perform on that virtual machine you can do now because you have you have connected with the virtual machine you can start working on it so previously we have covered how we can create a virtual machine and how we can stop that now i have shown you how we can start that virtual machine and how we can connect it and start working on it so that's an end to end process how to create how to connect previously i have shown you how to stop and how to start instance or you can call it virtual machine that's all we have for this session. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome back. So previously we have seen how we can create Linux VM by using AWS service and the service name was EC2. Now I will show you how we can create a Windows VM means Windows virtual machine using the same EC2 service. So these are the steps we are going to perform first of all we will create we will go and create a new instance with almost default configurations but i'll show you if we need to change anything we can set tags we can generate key for accessing that vm and we can start that vm instance okay let me just move to my aws account yeah here again we need to use ec2 service so either you can select it from here or you can search your service so I want to go to the EC2 okay that is open now here we have to go to the instances as we have created one one Linux instance previously so it shows that is your instance 
I want to create one more instance so I'll cl click on this launch instances and I want to go for free tier only so if you notice it shows some AMI means Amazon machine images so you will get like okay that is for Linux Linux just scroll down so that is for Windows you can use this or you will get few more options at the bottom for Windows so you can use anyone as per your requirement I will use this one so we just select this as we select again we are getting multiple options but we can use only this one because that is free to use and we have a free account for now so again it will have one CPU 1 GB RAM this is a very basic configuration machine okay I'll click on the next here we have lot of settings but as of now we will keep it same so next okay it is going to have 30 GB storage previously we have seen when we are working on Linux it was only 8 GB storage but here with the Windows machine we are getting 30 GB storage you can change it you can increase or decrease as per your requirement but as of now again we are keeping it same add tags previously we have seen we have a concept of tags which will help to identify the machine or to search machines when we have many virtual machines so I simply click on the tag and I'm just saying okay machine type and that is Windows okay you can give any value over here I have just given Windows now next configure security group that is very important previously we have seen we are using TCP protocol when we are configuring Linux VM here it will be a RDP access means remote desktop hopefully you have seen like we are going for MSTSC so it will be a RDP access RDP access and it will be on the port 3389 so we just need to remember this if you want you can save it also hope you remember we have seen like where you want to use this machine so you can give any custom IP you can give only your machine IP or you can give anywhere anywhere means this machine can be accessed from any system and any location so as of now we are making it anywhere but when machines are created when virtual machines are created inside any organization they keep the setting either custom or my IP anywhere means it will be less secure okay I'll just keep it anywhere for now review and launch as you go to the review and launch it will show all the settings that you have done even we did not make many changes it shows basic details basic configuration details I'll click on launch again how do you want to access this would you like to go for the existing VM access key which we have created previously while working on Linux machine would you like to use the same key it's up to you you can use the same one or you can create a new one like create a new pair of key with the name Windows key as we have seen previously it is going to create a file with the extension dot PEM we can download that so I'm just downloading it so Windows key dot PEM okay now simply launch instance so now my instance is going to be launch let's go there and I use EC2 service so you will notice now we have total two instances and the upper one which we have created just now is launching so again we have to wait until th this shows running and we have a status check 2 by 2 so let's refresh it will take few minutes to start this machine so I'm just waiting for that so now it shows machine is running and the status check is 2 by 2 check passed means yes now we can use this machine okay again we have seen some details previously like this is the public IP which we can use for connecting this machine 
this is the exact machine name so we can use this, this for connecting as well that's a private IP means if you want to connect one VM with another VM this is the IP which will be used so these are the three details we can use later on okay for now I want to connect with this machine so the, now machine is created virtual machine is created it is also up and running we can connect with that for connection we just select that machine and click on connect as we click on connect it will take you on a page here we need to go to the RDP client and we can simply download this client so I'll just click on the download remote desktop file now open it now click to open it connect so it is asking for password okay from where we can get the password you can check the username it shows administrator it is all automatically taking the administrator but how to fetch password for fetching the password just click on this get password select your PEM file which we have downloaded so I'll just click on the browse and hope you remember my file was windows key.pem we selected that so as we selected that it shows that file decrypt password now it shows that is your password I'll simply copy this and just paste it over here now click on ok yes so it is going to connect with my windows machine first time we are opening this machine so it could take some time for the configuration so we are just waiting for this configuration to be done then we'll check it so, okay the configuration is done you can simply check this machine is ready you can use it so that is the first way to connect with that windows virtual machine okay let me just break this connection other approach is that you can simply copy this public DNS go to run MSTSC now here you need to give your machine name so that is your public DNS that you will give as a name computer name connect now it will ask for username or password username is administrator password you can simply copy this and put over here so again you can simply copy and put over here so now we are going to connect with that windows machine so we have seen the two different ways by which we can connect with windows machine also previously we have seen how we can connect with the Linux machine but when we are connecting with the Linux or Unix machine it was through terminal we are writing commands and doing different operations on that but when we are connecting with the Windows machine we are using RDP it's a remote desktop connection so we are using the RDP client for it in this session we have covered how we can create Windows virtual machine how to set tags how to use how to generate password from that key which is PEM file and then how to initiate VM and how to connect with the VM as as I explained to you previously once your task is over and you break connection with your VM simply go and stop your VM else it will consume your free hours so that is a VM I just selected that and stop instance means we are stopping that VM you can take it like a shutdown we are shutting down that particular VM again it will take few minutes to stopping that VM so we have to stop all the VMs once our task is done that's all we have for this session thanks for watching this video